Hello everybody, Devin Martinez here, Product Manager for Trimple Geospatial Software. Today I'm going to cover visualizing your data by creating sample scans, and then give a basic overview of the three registration methods inside Trimble RealWorks. Bear in mind, we will be covering the most common use cases in terms of results. For a deeper dive into the registration process, please see our advanced registration tutorials. For this project, I collected four scans using the Trimble TX8 scanner. As a best practice, I left my most central scan leveled, denoted by the blue folder on the left-hand side in the list pane. I disabled the compensator for the rest of the scans, which will allow them to have six degrees of freedom during the registration process. This will result in a better overall registration. First, we will cover creating sample scans in order to visualize our data followed by an overview of automatic target-based registration, automatic plane-based registration, and finally, cloud-based registration. We'll start by selecting all of the scans in the list pane. If you can't see these, select your project in the workspace. With our scan selected, we'll go ahead and select Create Sample Scans. By default, I have Spatial Sampling Keep Detail selected. This method will focus the density of points on edges and corners. The points will be less dense on flat surfaces. Sampling by steps allows you to define the frequency at which we sample a point based on step size. For this demonstration, I will select Spatial Sampling. And I'll set my resolution to 0.02. With this method, a point will be visualized at every two hundredths of a foot. As part of the sample scan creation, we also have filtering options, where we can filter by range, which allows us to define a distance away from the scanner that we will keep points, and by zone, which allows us to define a square area between two points. For this demonstration, we will proceed with only spatial sampling. Go ahead and press OK. We are then asked if we would like to process the TZF scans, keeping in mind that this process is irreversible. I'll select Compress TZF Scans to minimize file size. Select OK to initiate the sample scan creation process. Once this process is finished, we can go up to our View tab and select Zoom Extents. If we zoom in in the workspace, we can see now that we're able to visualize our point cloud data. As we can see, all of our scans are overlapping one another at the centroid of the project. This is where the registration process begins. We will start our automatic target-based registration by first selecting all of the scans in the list pane. While in the registration tab, we'll select Auto Extract Targets. In this menu, RealWorks wants to know what targets we will be looking for. I didn't have any spherical targets, so I'll uncheck that. However, I did have black and white flat targets. A preview scan will create a sampled scan for visualization, but since we've already done this, I'll uncheck this box. The reference station is the station that will not move during the registration process. In our case, I'll leave this as station 2 as it was my leveled scan and most central scan. Select OK to initiate the automatic target-based registration. Three minutes later, our registration is complete, and based on the overall residual error, we've got some pretty good results here. We can continue to scroll through the details to view results of each individual station. Residual error is the error in our scan position, and fitting error is the error between the point we assign for the center of a target and the scan points that represent the target. To view additional details on our results, we can select the advanced box. Here we will be able to review the X, Y, and Z components of our residual error. We can also view additional details on the targets identified during the registration. Take target number one in station one, for example. The scan per target identifies how many times we've seen this target. Since we've seen target one twice, if we scroll down, we should see it one more time. And there it is in station two. If we see large residual errors, we have a problem. To fix these problems, please see our advanced registration tutorials. Close out of the registration details dialog box. 
select Apply to apply the registration, and close the registration tool. After any registration is complete, it's best practice to do a quick visual inspection of your scene. In our case, it appears that the registration has yielded successful results. Automatic plane-based registration identifies vertical planes. It utilizes these vertical planes to register scans to one another. This is not the best method if scanning in highly vegetated areas. We will start by selecting all of our scans in the list pane. In the registration tab, we'll select auto register using planes. Similar to target-based registration, we'll keep our reference station as station two, as it was our most central scan and leveled scan. All checked stations will be included in the plane-based registration. And again, we'll keep generated preview scan unchecked. Press start to initiate the automatic plane-based registration process. Three minutes later, our registration is complete and a registration report is displayed. Based on our overall cloud-to-cloud -cloud error in the bottom left, our registration was successful. This itemized report contains metrics such as coincident points percentage and confidence percentage. Coincident point percentage refers to point overlap, while confidence percentage refers to station-to-station -station registration certainty. At this point, we can save our registration report for later use, but we'll close the dialog box. Again, after every registration, we'll want to do a manual visual inspection. And based on what I can see here, I'm happy with the results. Cloud-based registration is a manual registration process where you will be fitting two clouds together like a puzzle. Seeing as this is a manual process, we have several different methods of accomplishing this in cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration. We will start by making sure that we have the registration tab open. Select all of your scans from the list pane and select cloud-based registration. We are then warned that the reference group has no leveled scans. That's okay for now. Similar to our other registration methods, our reference cloud is the stationary cloud. The moving cloud is the cloud that will be moving to the reference. The top left box represents our reference cloud. As we begin to add stations to the reference, this will grow. The top right cloud represents our moving cloud. The bottom box represents our registration results. Here we can see both our reference cloud and moving clouds together. The first cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration method we'll use is the magic wand. Scroll to the bottom of the workspace and select the magic wand. This will attempt to stitch the two stations together automatically. Once finished, we'll do a visual inspection on the cloud to ensure that we like our results. Once you're finished with your inspection, scroll to the bottom of the workspace to view error residuals. If you're happy with your error, select Apply. This will add the moving station to the reference station. After you applied this change, station 1 and 2 will now be the reference cloud and station 3 will be the moving cloud. The next method in cloud-based registration is manually aligning the two clouds and running a refinement. We'll start by selecting limit box mode in the view tab. Select the approximate center of your two clouds. Drag the z-axis toggles of the limit box until you are left with a thin slice of the two clouds. We will select the interactive rotation button to rotate the moving cloud into place. Then we'll use the interactive pan button to align the moving cloud to the reference cloud. Once you're happy with where you've placed the cloud, select the Refine button. Now that you've gotten these two clouds close together, the refinement will simply tweak them into place. If you wanted to continue with this method, you could keep the limit box on, but we'll go ahead and turn it off by exiting the limit box mode to take a good look at our registration. If you're happy with your visual inspection, scroll to the bottom of your workspace, note your refinement error, and select Apply. Again, by applying these changes, Station 3 joins Station 1 and 2 in the Reference Cloud, and Station 4 is automatically populated as the Moving Cloud. 
for the last cloud to cloud registration method, we'll use the selecting similar points approach. This approach involves selecting like points in the reference cloud and the moving cloud. Since we can't see inside the building, we'll have to clip off the roof of both clouds using the segmentation tool. Start by placing the reference cloud into a side view. We will then start tracing out the area we would like to remove from the point cloud. Double click to close out the loop and press the X to get rid of point cloud data. Close the segmentation tool and we will perform the same order of operations on the moving cloud. At this point, we've removed the roof from both the reference and moving clouds. Now we will work to find a similar point in both the reference and moving clouds. Once we find a like point, we'll select it in both the reference cloud box and the moving cloud box. After selecting this point, a registration result will be immediately computed. In the registration result box, we'll do a quick visual inspection to verify our results. If you're happy with the results, scroll to the bottom of the workspace, note your residual error, and select Apply. For this project, all scans have now been added to the reference cloud. We can go ahead and close the registration tool. Now that our registration is complete, I'd like to give it one last visual inspection. Again, this is Devin Martinez, Product Manager for Trimble Geospatial Software, and I sincerely thank you for joining us for our demonstration today on creating sample scans and registration basics.